I'm Tom Malogany for Inside EVs, and this is the Ford F-150 Lightning. The F-150 Lightning comes in Pro, XLT, Lariat, and Platinum trims, and it's available with either the standard range battery pack, which is 98 kilowatt hour, or the extended range battery pack, which is 131 kilowatt hour. Pricing ranges between $40,000 all the way up to about 95,000 for a fully loaded platinum version. The EPA driving range varies between 230 miles all the way up to 320 miles, depending on the trim you have and whether it's the standard or extended range battery pack. We're here in San Antonio, Texas at Ford's first drive event for the F-150 Lightning. So we're gonna have the opportunity to drive it on pavement, do some off-roading, pull some trailers, haul some cargo, and learn more about the unique features that the F-150 Lightning has. But first, don't forget, please click that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. One of the most interesting features of the F-150 Lightning is its ability to power your home in the case of a power outage. The vehicle can actually deliver up to 9.6 kilowatt to the house through the intelligent backup power system. And for the first time, Ford gave us the opportunity to see the system up close. Now let's take a look at the Ford Intelligent Backup Power System and the components you need to have this system. First off, we're gonna take a look at the Ford Charge Station Pro. This is a 80 amp, 19.2 kilowatt charging station and it can deliver up to 19.2 kilowatts to the F-150 Lightning. And if you have the extended range battery pack, it has the dual onboard chargers and can accept 80 amps up to 19.2 kilowatt. That's a very high powered home charging station. It actually also comes free with the vehicle if you get the extended range battery pack. If you get the standard range battery pack, you can purchase this directly from your Ford dealership. It costs $1,310. Now this is one piece of the puzzle. Then we have the home integration system, which we have here. This is an inverter. There's three parts to the, to the system. The inverter is first. This converts the electric that the Ford F-150 Lightning delivers to your house in DC direct current. It converts it to AC, which is what the house needs to power appliances and everything that your house runs on. It runs on alternating current, AC. Then we have the transfer switch. The transfer switch is necessary because when you have a power outage, that needs to disconnect your home from the grid so that you're not accidentally backfeeding electric to the grid and that would be a hazard to the line workers working to restore the power to the grid. The last part of the puzzle is this piece here. It's actually a little battery and it's required so that when the power does go out, the system has some sort of power source. Otherwise, the F-150 Lightning wouldn't send it power. It needs to communicate with the system. I'm, I'm sure there's some system checks to make sure everything's functioning fine and there's no type of problem. So the F-150 Lightning, when it sends the power to the, the Ford uh, Charge Station Pro, this then sends the power here. It needs to be able to communicate to the system. If it can't, it won't send power. That's why you need that little battery there, which is always getting constantly trickle fed when the power is on to make sure that it's there when you need it. The home integration system costs $3,895 for these components and you buy it directly through Sunrun. You don't buy this from Ford. If you need to buy a Charge Station Pro, you buy that from Ford, but the home integration system you have to buy through Sunrun. Now Sunrun is the recommended installer, but you don't have to use Sunrun. You can just purchase the system and use your own electrical contractor to install the system if you desire. So we're out on the road with the 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning Platinum trim. You can tell that's a platinum trim by this two-tone uh, leather interior. That's not available on any of the other trim levels. Even if you pay for it, it's just not available. So if you want to get this upgraded premium interior, you've got to spend the big bucks. And it is big bucks. This uh, specced out Platinum is a little over $90,000. So it's a considerable expense if you want to jump from Lariat up to Platinum. Uh, you can get uh, a similarly specced Lariat trim 
without this interior though for about ten thousand dollars less so it does make a big difference now this does have the extended range battery pack and the platinum is epa range rated at 300 miles per charge if you get the extended range battery pack in the lower trims the epa range rating is 320 miles 20 more miles than the platinum and that's because the platinum is a little bit heavier and it also has the bigger 20 inch wheels and you lose about 20 miles of EPA range rating. Uh, when I got in the vehicle, it was 99% charged and it was estimating 315 miles of range. So very close to what the EPA range rating is. And I've been driving it now for a while and I'm averaging about 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour, a mixture of highway driving where I was driving 70, 75 miles an hour. And now I'm on some of the back roads and I'm driving about 50, 60 miles an hour, but I'm also driving pretty aggressively. I've been getting, I've been getting on it like this just to feel this vehicle watch 60 70 80 yeah it's it gets up there pretty quickly it definitely you know this isn't your grandpa's pickup truck <laughs> and speaking of which it is the most powerful pickup truck Ford's ever made it has 580 horsepower and that's actually 17 more horsepower than what Ford was originally saying Ford was originally telling us that the extended range battery pack lightnings were going to have 563 horsepower just this week they announced it was going to have 17 more horsepower and be 580 it has 775 pound feet of torque matter of fact all the lightning have 775 pound feet of torque but the standard range battery pack uh, that has less power that has 452 horsepower and that's also up Ford had originally said it was going to be 426 so that has 26 more horsepower than Ford originally promised and the extended range battery pack has 17 more horsepower than what we've been told over the last year so Ford has a history of doing that kind of um, under promising and over delivering and they did this with the Mustang. We kind of learned as it was getting uh, close to production, the Mustang Mach-E I'm talking about, they just kind of gave us a, more good news and more good news and more good news. They held off the fact that the vehicle has more power on the Lightning till right before its launch. And also the payload capacity uh, is, is more than what they promised. They had told us it was gonna be 2,000 pounds. Now it's um, 236, 235 pounds more, so it's 2,000 235 pounds maximum capacity and that's uh you know the maximum payload capacity if you have i think you have to have um uh there's an option that allows you to get the maximum payload capacity but um that's right before launch again they're giving us some more good news which is always good to hear i also had an opportunity to use ford's blue cruise and that's a level two hands-free driver assist system i used it for about 15 20 miles on the highway driving at about 70 75 miles an hour there was one little glitch if you want to call it a glitch i was going around a big winding section of the highway and a car cut right out in front of me so the vehicle hit the brakes and also swerved a little bit to the left and when it did that we went outside of the driving lane don't think that's exactly what they want to do. Um, perhaps they, the vehicle thought that it had to do that in order to be able to avoid the accident. That wasn't the case. We weren't that close, but it swung really wide and we were going at highway speeds along a big winding turn. So it kind of felt like the vehicle was struggling to get back out onto the lane that it was supposed to be in. But it wasn't anything major, but uh, uh, I want to point that out because it was a little bit of a glitch. I think that isn't probably the way that they want it to work in a perfect situation. They would have maintained the lane that we were in. It didn't need to go outside of the lane, even though it only did it for three or four seconds. It was something to made me get ready to want to grab the steering wheel and take over, which I didn't have to. So now I'm having an opportunity to test out the hands-free Blue Cruise system in stop-and-go traffic. It's actually working really well. I've been in other systems where the uh, adaptive cruise control is more choppy when cars cut you off, when the vehicle in front of you slows down abruptly, your vehicle really, you know, either jams on the brakes or, or um, disengages because it's, it's deeming that it's a little bit too difficult for it to deal with. 
but the Blue Cruise is working really great here. And we're having a lot of vehicles merge in, cut in front of me, slow down really quickly in front of me, and everything is really smooth. It's working really well. I'm really impressed with it. It worked very well at high speeds also, but this is a little bit more impressive to me with how smooth it is. I don't feel like I'm, you know, jerking back and forth. A lot of times that happens when you're using these adaptive cruise control systems at lower speed. They don't act that smoothly, but the Blue Cruise system is really nice and smooth and actually making this stretch of the road that I'm driving here now on uh, pleasant, even though it's really stop and go traffic. We've been in this for about five miles now and it's actually really working well. One thing I will notice, it does have driver monitoring. So if I look away too long, I get a warning. And if you continue to do that, it'll disengage. So I'm going to look away for a little bit now just to see how quick it takes the warning to come up. Okay, so now I'm going to look at the, tr the camera over here and let's see. Right there it goes. Watch the road and give me a triangle with an exclamation point. So not that long. And you could tell as soon as I looked back, it stopped blinking and stopped making that audible alert. So it's watching me. The F-150 Lightning does have one pedal driving, but you do have to enable that feature and it's available in the drive mode section of the center infotainment screen. There's a really nice meter on the left side of the driver's display that shows you when you're either using power under acceleration or when the regenerative braking system is active and you are recuperating some of that energy. And even though Ford didn't plan for us to do any DC fast charge recordings on this first drive media event, I happened to notice on my Electrify America app that there was a charging station not too far from the course that Ford had plotted out for us. So I made a couple wrong turns and I'm here. <laughs> Now, the vehicle is still at 61% state of charge, so we're not gonna get a full DC fast charge recording like we like to do. I've driven it over 100 miles now already, and this has the extended range battery pack, 131 kilowatt hour, so the battery's still at 61% state of charge. So I figure we'll charge it from 61% up till around 80, 81%, and we'll see how long that takes. So we plug in at 61% state of charge and the lightning is pulling 142 kilowatt, very promising. However, it immediately starts ramping down and after five minutes of charging, we're accepting 117 kilowatt. But the charge rate starts to climb up again and at the 10 minute mark, we're charging at 121 kilowatt and we've added 17% state of charge as the lightning is now at 77% state of charge. It holds 122 kilowatt until the state of charge reaches 80%, at which time the charge rate falls off a cliff and lands at 59 kilowatt. Now I'm stopping the video here to point out that we went from 61% state of charge to 80% state of charge in 12 minutes. That's very good for an EV with a 131 kilowatt hour battery pack while charging at a relatively high state of charge. However, from here on out, it's slow going. I intended on stopping at 80%, but I had some extra time and wanted to see how the charge rate would taper off from 80% to 90%. And as you can see, it holds the 59 kilowatt until about 85% state of charge, at which time it starts to rapidly drop off until 90% state of charge, when the lightning is accepting only 30 kilowatt of power. All right, so let's take a quick look at the charge in session summary. We charged for exactly 30 minutes and the station dispensed 41.2 kilowatt hour. Now we took in 29% of the battery pack. And if you do the math based on 131 kilowatt hour battery pack, that should only be 38 kilowatt hour of power. The additional 3.2 kilowatt hour is charging losses. That always happens when you DC fast charge. There's always some type of charging losses. But what's really important to take a look at here is the cost. So it cost us $9.79 to go from 61% to 90%. That's 29% of the battery. So if you do the math, the full charge from zero to 100% would have cost us $33.75. And the vehicle I was driving is the Platinum version, which has an EPA range rating of 300 miles per charge. Now, I just want to do a quick comparison to the other pickup trucks that Ford sells. I looked up the national average for regular gasoline today, and it's $4.25 a gallon.
In my opinion, the closest comparison would be the Raptor because of the performance. And if you take a look at the Raptor, it gets a combined gas mileage of 16 miles per gallon. So you would need 18.75 gallons in order to drive 300 miles. If you do the math, that means you're going to pay $80 for gas to drive the same distance the Lightning can for $33.75. Now, if you take a look at the 4x4 Power Boost F-150, it gets a combined gas mileage of 24 miles per gallon. So it would need 12.5 gallons of gas to drive 300 miles. Do the math, that's $53. So you have the Lightning at $33.75, the 4x4 Power Boost at $53, and a Raptor at $80 to drive 300 miles based on today's fuel prices. And that's not even the best part. The best part about this is most people are going to charge their F-150 Lightning at home. And you always pay less to charge your electric vehicle at home than you do on public charging stations like I did here. The average price of electricity in the U.S. is a little more than 14 cents per kilowatt hour. If you multiply that times the Lightning's battery of 131 kilowatt hour, you're going to get a little bit less than $20. So you could basically drive 300 miles for about $20 in an F-150 Lightning. It'll cost you about $53 to do it in a 4x4 Power Boost and $80 to drive 300 miles in a Ford Raptor. One of the coolest features of the F-150 Lightning is its enormous mega power frunk that you open up by pressing the key fob twice. There's also a button inside so that you can open it up if you accidentally or purposely lock yourself in there. Now, in addition to have this huge storage area, one thing that's really important is this low loading height. This is about the same loading height as say a Ford Explorer. If you take a look at the Rivian R1T, which is the other electric pickup truck with a big frunk, you have to lift all your cargo up over the front of the truck. That's not too good if you're carrying heavy stuff, loading in bags of cement or mulch or something like that. You've got to come up all the way over the top and drop it in. With the F-150 Lightning, easy access pulling it in and out. There's a bunch of tie downs in here. There's two LED lights up on the top if you're loading or unloading when it's dark. There's also a bunch of outlets over here on the side. There's four 120 volt outlets, a USB-C and a USB-A port. So this whole front frunk area can literally be a, a portable office for you. There's additionally storage space down below here. You lift this up, it's where you'll keep things like your charging cable, which is where Ford has the mobile charging uh, cord. The frunk actually is an amazing tool for business as well as uh, personal use. Having a lockable storage in the front that's safe is really a game changer as far as pickup trucks are concerned. One of the things that Ford did that everyone at the first drive event appreciated was they had all of the different versions of the F-150 Lightning from Pro all the way up to Platinum available for driving, allowing us to drive any and every configuration that we wanted. In addition to the highway driving route, they had an off-road course set up so we could test out how well the all-wheel drive system works and get the trucks a little dirty in the meantime. Of course, it wasn't nearly as challenging as what we experienced at the Rivian R1T first drive event. But again, the F-150 Lightning isn't really designed to be the go-anywhere adventure vehicle that the R1T is. The Lightning is primarily a work truck and Ford wanted to show us that it's as tough as it can be and it can work just as hard as the gas-powered F-150, which by the way has been the overall number one selling vehicle in the U.S. for like 45 years. Ford allowed us to drive the Lightning loaded up with payload to show off its 2,235 pound payload capacity. We also had the opportunity to drive the Lightning pulling trailers, and Ford had a lineup of different trailers available for us to drive. I chose to take out the Airstream, but there were horse trailers, a trailer with an electric tractor on it, and even an electric boat. The Lightning pulled the Airstream without any issue, as I expected it would with its 775 pound-feet of torque and 580 horsepower. I would, however, recommend Lightning owners get the Max Tow Package, which costs $825 if they plan to tow, because that includes dual AC compressors to keep the battery and powertrain from overheating from the extra work needed for towing. 
That Form 50 Lightning is going to be used by a variety of different customers, from personal transportation to businesses to fleet use, and customers are going to need to recharge the vehicle in a variety of ways. So Ford put together a nice, I'll call it a cheat sheet, to tell you about how long it's going to take to recharge the Lightning, depending on what equipment you're charging it from. There's the 32 amp Ford mobile charger that comes standard with all Lightning, then the Ford Connect charge station, which is a 48 amp level two charging station that you can buy from your Ford dealer. It costs $799. Then there's the Ford Station Pro, the 80 amp charging station we talked about earlier, as well as a Electrify America DC fast charging station station that can deliver 150 kilowatts. Now you can charge the Lightning on any DC fast charging station, not just the Electrify America charging network. However, Ford partnered with Electrify America, so that's why they're using their branding on this little card here. And you could also see that the charging times are for both the standard range battery pack and extended range battery pack. I think this card's a useful tool for F-150 Lightning owners, so they know about how long it's going to take to recharge the vehicle. Earlier I explained the equipment needed for the Lightning's intelligent backup power system. The Lightning also has Ford Pro Power on board, and I'd like to explain the difference. Now both systems can deliver up to 9.6 kilowatts of power. That's 40 amps, but they do it in different ways. The intelligent backup power system requires Ford's home integration system to be installed at your home or business and can provide whole home power for days. And it's set up to turn on automatically during an outage as long as the truck is plugged into the Charge Station Pro when that happens. Now with Ford Pro Power on board, you have access to the 11 power outlets on the Lightning. 10 of those outlets are 120 volt and there's one 30 amp 240 volt outlet. You could basically run extension cords from all of these outlets to power your home, a job site, a campground, or really anything that needs power. However, the standard Pro Power Onboard only delivers 2.4 kilowatt. You need to have the optional higher powered version to be able to deliver the full 9.6. You can even use Pro Power on board to charge an electric vehicle. The 30 amp outlet will deliver up to 7 kilowatts, provided you have the proper adapter to plug the portable charging cable into. Well, that's it for our first drive impressions for the Ford F-150 Lightning. I know we didn't get to everything today, but there's so much to talk about with the F-150 Lightning. It has so many features, it's impossible to cram everything into one video. Good news is, this is launching now. Within the next week or two, it's gonna be in customer hands. We have one on order. We're gonna be getting one really soon and be able to follow up with a lot of content with the F-150 Lightning. So please leave your questions in the comment section of the video and we'll try to get them all answered for you as soon as we get one and we have it for a longer period of time to do all of our usual testing. Thanks for watching and don't forget, click that subscribe button, follow us on social media, all that good stuff and we'll see you next time.